In Climate Watch, 2020 brought a record 12 named storms to the United States. In Louisiana, where five storms made landfall this year, the effects are driving people out of their homes, which in some cases are already underwater. 60 and 6 correspondent Enrique Acevedo went to the southern coast to see how one state agency is trying to save what coastline remains. After Hurricane Laura hit Louisiana in late August, some homes in Cameron Parish could only be reached by boat, despite being eight miles inland from the Gulf Coast. When you talk about water, that's normally pasture, correct? Yeah, this is supposed to be pasture. We met up with Heidi Bassigalopi after another storm. Hurricane Delta hit nearly two months later. And where land, typically used by grazing cows, remain underwater. For most of these people around here, it's their second or third time they've had to rebuild their home in the last 15 years? From scratch, from absolutely nothing, you know, cinder blocks and cement slabs, yes. There's a cost of opportunity to rebuilding and spending all that time, that energy and, and that money. I mean, you have to decide, you know, where you're going to spend your dollar um, and, and it's either to fix this place and take the chance of something happening or not happening or to try to spend that dollar somewhere else. Her husband's family has held this land for four generations. But after a record year of storms, people living and working on Louisiana's Gulf Coast are having to decide whether to rebuild or retreat. So prior to May, this would have all been open water. And they are the questions that fuel the efforts of people like April Newman, a project manager with Louisiana's Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority, or CPRA. When we met in October, she was overseeing a 24-7 operation to expand protective barrier islands where the Gulf of Mexico meets Terrebonne Bay. How does everything that we are seeing here fit in the larger project to protect the Gulf Coast? So on this project, we have chosen the most vulnerable areas along that barrier island chain to add sand back, to nourish, so that the islands can sustain themselves for longer. So by doing that, they're going to protect all of the inland wetlands and all of the communities that stand behind them in the Terrebonne Basin. This three and a half mile stretch of New Beach should also help protect Port Fouchon, a pillar of the region's valuable energy industry. Once completed, the project will add 1,100 acres of new land to Louisiana's coast. It's progress but a drop in the bucket for a region that could lose 1,100 acres every two months to sea rise, sinking soil, and erosion. We're not even saying we're going to continue to have what we have, but we're better off than we would if we did nothing. Darren Lee is a scientist with the CPRA. So that would be unrealistic, to think that we're going to be able to conserve what we have right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is all a planning process, but, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, our master plan in some ways is a managed retreat plan. We know we're not going to have as much 50 years in the future as we have right now. Hard decisions are going to have to be made. And not all of those decisions are focused on only saving land. This is Queen Bess Island. It was restored earlier this year by the CPRA, not to protect the coastline, but to preserve the wildlife habitat. Funding for the project came from a $20.8 billion settlement from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. The 2010 industrial disaster contaminated wildlife habitats and damaged commercial fishing in the region. The oiling came in actually pretty much from where we're sitting right now. Mm. There was a huge uh, breach in the island uh, just behind you. John Weave is with Louisiana's Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and helped manage the restoration and expansion of Queen Bess Island, which grew its habitat from five acres to more than 35. We did have some initial concerns because this is the first time that we've ever restored a historic brown pelican colony in the state. Uh, but by April of uh, this year, we started seeing groups of 10, 20, 30, 50 birds coming in at a time. So far, $562 million from Deepwater Horizon funds have financed 13 CPRA-affiliated projects and, in the past decade, created more than 4,000 acres of land and marsh. We can create a lot of marsh, and we've done a lot of it in big scale, 1,000 acres, 2,000 acres. Images from the U.S. Geological Survey show Louisiana with and without its protective wetland buffer and offer a bigger picture of what the CPRA is fighting for. 
part of our master plan is flood proofing homes and businesses. We can't necessarily protect everything with a levy. We can't necessarily protect everything, so some things are going to continue to flood. Much of this highway is now an elevated road because the original route flooded frequently, blocking access to the port and isolating many of the communities in the area. The elevated highway now bypasses the small and sinking town of Leeville. This is to be a bustling community. Harry Sheremy owns Libyl Seafood Restaurant. He says business dropped when the road went up, but blames the frequency of rising tides for driving some residents away. My feeling, for the next five to 10 years, Libyl is gonna be underwater. I talked to a state engineer. He told me in 10 years, Libyl sank 18 inches. So, so it can't continue like it is. So the, the, the land is it's sinking? sinking. Eight days after our conversation, Hurricane Sita hit Libyl hard and ripped the restaurant from its foundation. The family business survived three generations and numerous floods, but Harry says they won't rebuild. Harry Basigalopi's family will rebuild, but not here. They've decided to move to higher ground about 20 minutes farther inland. You're not worried that in Let's hope not, of course, knock on wood. Yeah, in 15, you can knock twice if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> in 15 years, you're going to have to move 20 minutes farther north and just keep doing that. That's the hope. So um, anytime you have a you know, Category 4 hurricane come through, you really can't escape the wind. But you hope to escape the water. Just as the storm surge comes in and goes out, that's so do the people. Enrique Acevedo, CBS News, Cameron Parish, Louisiana.